I need to sit right here. Okay. When we first met Edie Gilger in 2013, she seemed like your typical healthy four-year-old. What are you doing first? Ooh, what's that? It's a stethoscope. You'd never know she'd just been to hell and back. There we go. Wait, Baba. At six months old, Edie was diagnosed with neuroblastoma, cancer of the nerve tissue, with tumors in her spine and belly that were growing out of control. Chemo and surgery weren't working, so doctors threw a Hail Mary pass and gave her an experimental drug that turned off the specific gene in her body that was making her cancer grow. She says it tasted awful, but in less than a month, her cancer was totally gone. Today, at home in South Carolina, Edie's eight years old and still cancer-free. Parents Nick and Emily are, of course, over the moon. How much medicine is she on? She is not on anything right now. Nothing? Nothing. The good news is that a little girl survived pediatric cancer. Daddy, daddy. The better news is that it's happening more often. Are we beating childhood cancer? We're making advances in certain childhood cancers that we hadn't envisioned five years ago. Dr. Peter Adamson at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia heads up the nationwide children's oncology group, and he says there's good reason for hope. So let's start with the most common childhood cancer, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, ALL. So in the 1960s, a child with ALL had a less than 10% chance of being cured. The same child born today has close to a 90% chance of being cured. So that's dramatic progress in a relatively short span of history. If there's a downside to saving children's lives, it's that most young cancer survivors are in for problems down the road. So a kid survives, but still has consequences for the rest of his or her life? That's right. We have children who, as teenagers, require hip replacements because of our treatment. Then there are a number of children who, by the time they're in their 20s, early 30s, experience heart failure. And here's the real zinger. Since more adults get cancer than kids, there's less government research money for childhood cancer cures. Far less. The estimate from the National Cancer Institute is about 4% of their budget goes to studying childhood cancer. Why is that so small? There are some who believe that we solved the childhood cancer problem. We haven't. We're curing children today that 10 years ago we knew we couldn't cure. And that only comes through research. Thank you. Have a good day. So a large chunk of pediatric research money comes from private charities. One of the biggest was started by a young cancer patient, Alex Scott, who raised research money by selling lemonade on her front lawn. Alex died in 2004, but her foundation has attracted thousands of volunteers, this reporter included, and raised more than $100 million to bankroll new treatments like the one that saved Edie Gilger's life. The people at Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance, who were already big contributors to childhood cancer research, were apparently moved by Edie's story. Look at this. The they even built a float in her honor for this year's Rose Parade in Pasadena. A giant floral sculpture of a blonde former cancer patient just being a little girl again. How do you feel about all this? Very lucky that they made that medicine because if they didn't make that medicine, I would be in heaven. <laughs> and that's something her parents thank heaven for every day. Edie I had literally just been rushed to the ICU, and I left the hospital that afternoon. And I looked in the rear view, and I saw Edie's car seat empty. And I remembered that pe there are people that leave the hospital, and they don't get to, you know, put their child in that car seat ever again. When we left the hospital, she came with us. She left with us. You know, it's a... Uh, that's a big, big thing.